Well, praise the Lord, everybody. This is Bishop Edgar L. Van, Second Ebenezer, Detroit. Ebenezer everywhere. I'm excited, delighted to share with you on tonight in our wonderful Wednesday in the Word. I'm in a series uh, entitled, I Will Not Be Shaken. And I'm telling you, it has been a blessing to so, so many. If that has been your experience uh, with this teaching, uh, please, please go right to the comment box now. You have an opportunity to let us know how this teaching is blessing you uh, and enriching your life. Uh, you know, that is my primary purpose uh, for being here with you on tonight, just to let you know that it is uh, our quest. It is um, our desire to make sure that your life is being enriched. I'm not doing this. Uh, I'm not doing a Bible study just to be doing a Bible study. I'm not doing a Bible study because I, uh, you know, have no other way to, to express myself or I, I, I need a platform in order to somebody to know me. I'm not doing it for any of that. I am doing it because I sincerely in my heart have a call on my life, but also a burning desire to see you know God better and to see you walk with God better and more closely and more dearly and more nearly. That is my prayer for you, sincerely from my heart. I want you to be able to walk this thing out, to be, to be a child of God for real, and, 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 and not one of the pseudo childs of God that we see, children of God that we see, you know, uh, expressed in so many places and, and spaces these days. I want you to know God for yourself because I promise you that at some point in your life, some point or another, you're going to need God like you've never needed him before. Well, I'm excited about getting directly into it. I don't want to waste a lot of time uh, or waste your time tonight either. But listen, you want to be a part of our family. You want to be a part of our ministry. You want to be covered by our ministry. You want to be, um, you want to belong to our ministry. It's very simple now. We, we're taking advantage of this technology, which allows us that opportunity. Uh, you don't have to come down an aisle in front of a whole lot of people. And, you know, we're not requesting that you uh, shed tears and fall out or anything like that. You have to make a decision. Your life is made by two things making choices and taking chances. This is an opportunity for you to make a choice. Text me right now, join SEC, join SEC. Text that to 940-00. And you instantly become a part of us. Text me right now. And then you have an opportunity to support us, uh, especially, um, uh, with your gifts and your resources. We are so, so appreciative of each and every one of you who have been so kind and so generous and so open to supporting this ministry, making this ministry viable, making this ministry a ministry that can serve you. We're a giving church. I, I, I make no apologies. We, we, we give, 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 give. We help people. We do all kinds of things. Our record is, is clear and uh, our record is uh, uh, a long, long time of doing it. I've been doing it for 45 years since I've been a pastor here. I didn't just start because we have a pandemic going on. But even through the pandemic, we've stepped up what we do for people, what we do for communities, what we do for folk, not just in our congregation, though we help people in our congregation, but far beyond our congregation. And so it's been such a blessing uh, for us to serve you. Give us that opportunity, will you? Cash App, Giveify, PayPal, go to our website, secondebenezer.org, 
our mobile app, Second Ebenezer Church Detroit, uh, downloadable on Android and on Apple. And of course, uh, you can just send it here, 14601 Dequinda Road, Detroit, Michigan, 48212. Let me say that again, 14. 601 Dequinder Road, that's D E Q U I N D R E, Dequinder Road, Detroit, Michigan, 48212. You'll be so glad that you did. Well, listen, I have been talking about I will not be shaken. That's been, oh, that's been our affirmation. In this new year, this month of January, as we continued uh, our fast throughout this month, and we've been fasting and praying for the blessings throughout January, for the blessings of the Lord we know make it rich and addeth no sorrow to it. We've been praying for families. We've been praying for marriages. We've been praying for our youth, our children. We've been praying for our seniors. We've been praying for everybody. We've had special prayer in so many special areas. We've had hundreds and hundreds of people on our prayer calls. And uh, as we have continued to uh, abstain through this time of fasting. And you know what? We're already seeing results. We're already seeing God do exceeding abundantly. That's far beyond abundance. Abundance is already more than enough, but exceeding abundantly above all that you could ever ask or think. Here's our mantra for January, and it's a good mantra beyond January. I will not be shaken. I won't do it because I understand what it means and the value of being a steadfast and a consistent person. One of the things I've always sought to do in my life, and uh, those of you that know me well, know that one of the things, one of the characteristics that's most important to me is being consistent. I, 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 I get tired of wishy-washy people people who are, the switch is on and then the switch is off. And then the switch is in the middle and you don't know which way it is. Um, I think inconsistency is, is really a sin. I, I'd rather, I, because it, it shows that you don't know who you are or that you're not really who you say you are. You have to be consistent enough in your life for someone to either to even gather a profile of you, to even gather a thought of you, to even know your character, to know your reputation, to know what you stand for, to know who you are. You can't truly be known to others. And if you can't truly be known to others, you can't truly be in relationship with others without consistent behavior. Consistent behavior is what makes you who you are. I mean, the time is out for, 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 for all of this wishy-washiness. The time is out for people with so much drama attached to them. The time is out for people who are, 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 are this way today, that way tomorrow, this way this morning, that way tonight. I mean, who are so easily offended and they're all ticked off about. They don't even know what they're ticked off. About. They don't have any degrees of disagreement. They don't have any degrees of dissatisfaction. They're just on 100 or they're on zero. They're either sad or mad. You know, they're either happy or mad. And they can't even express themselves. Ask God for, for some strength to be able to express yourself when you are unhappy about something. 
without having to be so violent about it and without having, ask God to help you articulate so, so you don't have to just take it upon yourself physically. You know, I, I was in a store the other day. I was, I was, I was so almost embarrassed. I don't even know why I was embarrassed. It wasn't me. I didn't do it. But, but there was a lady in there with a child. And I don't know, the child evidently didn't do something that they wanted them to do or maybe said something. Anyway, this, this, this poor child, this mother, just to the top of her voice in the store, started cursing at this child and calling her own flesh and blood, because they looked just alike, their own flesh and blood started calling her all kinds of despicable epithets, all kinds of stuff that, that's, that, that is uh, unutterable. I, I wouldn't even begin to try to describe what she said to that child in front of all of these people. And I don't, I don't care how angry, angry she was. I don't care how, uh, uh, I didn't see anything the child had done. Maybe the child uh, had a flip mouth and said something back to him. I don't know. I, 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 I didn't see anything that the child had done. But even if, the, even if it was legitimate that the child needed to be disciplined, that wasn't discipline. That was a lack of self-control. What is it that you stand for? How consistent are you in being who you are? How steadfast are you? How unmovable are you? Here's my scripture for tonight. It's 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 38. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, it's the last verse of that said chapter. Verse 58. In the King James, it says, uh, Therefore, brother and I, 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 I'm looking at what it means to be consistent. I'm sorry. Let me, let me read it in the New International Version. I think it is a more amplified opportunity for us. Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, stand firm. Therefore, stand firm. In other words, um, refuse to be shaken when contrary winds blow your way, when opposition comes. Some of us have a problem because we think everybody's supposed to like us because we're a nice person. And the validation of others has become super important to us. I will tell you that if you're living this life seeking to be validated by everyone and hoping that there will never be a person that dislikes you and that everyone is going to like you and sing your praises and accolades and this, that. You are sadly mistaken. And it's got, you've got to get yourself to a point where, where you realize that all I have is who I am and what I stand for and my convictions about Christ. And I'm going to stand in my convictions about God and his Christ, and I'm going to be who God has called me to be. I'm going to behave as God has intended for me to behave no matter what. Therefore, in, in other words, in view of everything. That's why it's there. In view of everything. In view of everything that came before the therefore. The therefore, the word therefore is a conclusion. When you get to the word therefore, you're coming to your final statement. You, you have considered all of the pros and the cons. You've considered 
all of the good and the bad. You've considered all of the input and output. And now you're saying to yourself, therefore, I've come to this conclusion. Stand firm. Do you hear me? 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58. Therefore, my brothers, my sisters, stand firm. Do you know what you're standing for? Do you know what you're standing on? Do you know how firmly you need to be planted? Stand firm. Watch this. Watch this. I'm in the New International Version. Let nothing move you. Wow. Whoa. There it is. I will not be shaken. Let nothing move you. Stand firm. Let nothing move you. Stand firm. Let nothing move you. Oh, wow. You know, now, a days, we're moved by so many things. We're, 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 we're moved by a headline. We're moved by what we see on television. We're moved by what's in social media today. It's like it's guiding our lives. God says, let your convictions guide your life. Stand firm, stand firm, and let nothing move you. Always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord. Give yourself fully to the work of the Lord. Let, let me ask a question, because this says always do that. But I need to ask somebody out there, have you ever given yourself fully to anything? That's the question I need to ask. Have you ever given yourself fully to anything? A lot of us joined the church. We didn't give ourselves fully to God. Mm -mm. We didn't even plan to. We're going to live a life among the saints, we're going to live a life around the church folks, and then we're going to live a life out there, right? And what happens is we live in so much life out there and never changing our life in here that we bring the life from out there in here. See, walking into this place is not going to make you different. Lord Jesus. Just, just singing a few praise songs not going to make you different. Using your gifts, playing music and spoken word ain't going to make you. Preaching. It's a shame, but it won't make you different. Your heart, your convictions, you have to have a conviction to live. You have to have a heart to live by your convictions. You have to have a will. You have to have a desire. I will. And you got to know what you will do and what you will not do. And our affirmation for tonight is, I will not be shaken. Our affirmation for tonight is right here where it says, let nothing move you. Stand firm, my dear brothers and sisters. Let nothing move you. After you've taken into account, there's a therefore that starts the, 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 the verse. Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord. Wow. Uh-oh. Not just give myself fully to the Lord, but to his work. It's one thing to say, Lord, I love you. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I praise you. Lord, I mean, everybody's writing songs, right? <laughs> right? It's another thing to say, I'm loyal 
to the work of the Lord. I'm giving myself over to the work of the Lord. Now, I don't I want you to get it mixed up. It does not necessarily mean public ministry or institutional public ministry as being a minister, an evangelist, a, 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 a prayer warrior, a, a bishop, or this or that or the other, apostle, whatever. It doesn't mean that. Give yourself fully over to the work of the Lord. Don't go quitting your job and say, well, it's time for me to give myself over fully to the Lord. A uh, God, uh, he want me to do so and so and so now. No. God probably, now you talk to God because I'm not God, but more than likely God wants you to stay right where you are and be a better light right there. Be a better witness. And not necessarily always a verbal witness. Be a life witness. Be the kind of witness in the world where the world sees your light. And you don't have to say, hey, look at me. Do you see my light? Y'all see my light? Hey, how's everybody? Y'all see my light tonight? No. When I say they see your light, your light is ever shining in you. It's so organically you that it's a part of you. It does not, it does not have a switch that has to be turned on. It's so much a part of you, it is undeniable. It is so much a part of you, it will always manifest. It is so much a part of you, it's just like your DNA. It automatically makes itself known. We got too many contrived Christians trying to impress people with how deep they are and how close they are to God. Just live it. Just live it. That's all you got to do. Just live it, my brother, my dear brother. Just live it, my dear sister. Huh? Let's just live it. Let, let, let's, let's stop playing with it. Let's live it. Let's stop pretending we're going to do it. Let's live it. Let's not say one day I will. Let's live it. Let's not say, well, I got to get some stuff out the way. I, and once I take care of this and I, I take care of that and I take care of the other, then I'll be in a position to do. No, let's just live it. Let's just live it. There's some things that you need and I need to stop. And we know it. So stop it and live it. There's some things that, that I can do better. Just do it. Well, many of us are sitting up waiting for God to slap us in the face and make us do something. Now, there are going to be some times where he has to do that. But what he wants to see in you is stand firm. Let nothing move you. Be ye steadfast, it says in the King James, unmovable, always abounding, fully giving yourself over to the Lord, always abounding in the work of the Lord. Be ye steadfast, there's that word again, steadfast, that word that speaks of consistency. Be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. The King James says, and as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Stand firm, let nothing move you. Always give yourself fully to the work of the Lord because you know that whatever work you do for him and whatever labor you have, through him, it is not in vain. Now, I want to talk a little bit about the characteristics of the steadfast, of the unshaken crowd, 
of the consistent Christian. I want you to get these points tonight as I share them with you. Your labor's not in vain. Let me just encourage somebody real quick. Your labor's not in vain. Your labor's not in vain. You've worked hard and tried to figure out, has it been worth it? Your labor's not in vain. You've helped other people and they've gone on and wiped your face with it. Some of them didn't even say thank you. Your labor's not in vain. People who ought to be appreciating you are the ones out there excoriating you. Your labor's not in vain. You've tried, you've worked, you've toiled, you've climbed, you've grinded toward a goal. And it's been so hard for you to achieve it and you're not even there yet. Can I encourage you? Your labor's not in vain. You've worked hard at home on a marriage. You've worked hard in your family. You've tried, you've worked hard with some children. Maybe it's a grandchild. You've worked hard with them. You've been on your knees. You've been in your word. You've been talking to God about them, their situation, their life. Let me just tell you, your labor is not in vain. It's good to know that when you stand firm, you let nothing move you when you always give yourself to the work of the Lord. It's good to know that your labor is not in vain. So I want to talk to you about the characteristics of this steadfastness that you need. This, this resolute attitude that you need. This I will not be shaken attitude. This living unshaken attitude. Get up in the morning, first of all. Just tell yourself today, I will not be shaken. Not going to happen today. And I'm going to stick to that. I don't care what somebody says or what they do. It's not going to matter to me. I will not be shaken. Get up in the morning. Let that be your affirmation. Write it on your, uh, 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 tape it up on your refrigerator, on your mirror while you call yourself getting dressed and, 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 and ready for the day. Put it in a place, a prominent place where you're going to see it. Leave it at night on your steering wheel so that when you get in the car, you've forgotten about it, but something there is reminding you, you will not be shaken. Leave a memo on your desk somewhere in that drawer that you know you're going to pull out. I will not be shaken. Let that be your affirmation tonight. Let that be your mantra tonight, your motto tonight. I will not be shaken. Somebody take three or four seconds and just put that in that comment box for me right now. I will not be shaken. Shaken. I'm going to be steadfast. I'm going to be unmovable. I'm going to be always, watch this, always abounding. Ah, I, I am ever increasing. I am ever being blessed. I am always abounding. To abound means to grow. To abound means to increase. Steadfast, unmovable. Now, I didn't say stubborn. I said steadfast, unmovable. I'm talking about in convictions. I'm not talking about in, in your opinions. Well, I have an opinion, and I ain't nobody going to get me to stop thinking what I'm thinking, believing what I'm believing. No, I'm talking about in your faith. Steadfast, stand firm, unmovable. Let nothing move you. And the King James says, always abounding. Oh, I love it. Always abounding in the work of the Lord. Always 
abounding in the work of the Lord. I am ever abounding. Oh, what an affirmation. I will not be shaken. I will be steadfast. I will be unmovable and I will always abound. I am always blessed. God is always sending me increase and resources and strength and love. My prayers are being answered. I will not be shaken. Oh, I just feel, don't you feel the power in that? Well, here's some characteristics. I'm going to give them to you real quick. Here's some characteristics tonight. These are characteristics of a steadfast, consistent person. Number one, peace of mind. When you're consistent, you don't always have to arrive at so many decisions. There's certain decisions for me that are Single source decisions, I call them. They're things I've already decided. So when I'm confronted with it, the answer's already no. You know, you know what I'm saying? I mean, there's, there's, certain, there's certain lines of demarcation. There's certain boundaries that I have because of the resoluteness of my faith, because of the firmness of what my convictions are and what I believe, that, 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 that I'm not going to, those are things I'm not going to do. I'm not going to see a, 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 you know, someone, unfortunately, uh, with an open purse and there's money coming out of it. I'm not going to take that person's money. I, I'm not going to take some, I, 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 that I, and I know it's someone else's, and it belongs to someone else. I have no reason to do that. that that's one of my non-negotiables. That's a part of my conviction. I mean, you could say it's thou should not steal, but it's just, it's a part of my conviction. I don't do that. That's not my mode of behavior. I'm just giving you, a, you know, an example. So I'm not going to do that. I've already decided that. So I can see the, the roll of $100 bills coming out of your pocket. But it's not going to make me change my conviction. That's what I'm saying. When we say stand firm, let nothing move you. That's what we're talking about. Is being a, able to adopt some principles in your, in your heart and in your mind that give you peace of mind. And I'm at peace with that. I don't have to wrangle and say, oh, oh I should have took that money. I should have took that money. I know I had some bills to pay. I should have took that. Yeah. Do you think, you know, people call me with this. Do you think that was God trying to bless me? Uh, was that the devil? trying to mess with me. I, I don't know. Uh, Pastor, can you tell me? No. What's mine is mine. What God has for me is for me. That's my conviction. No. Somebody else's loss. Inadvertently like that. No, it wasn't your blessing. No. What God has for me, he's going to give me. I'm just using that as an example. I stand on my convictions. There are certain things that I already decided. So I have peace of mind. I'm not beating myself up. I'm not saying, should I, shouldn't I, should I, shouldn't I. I remember many years ago, I had uh, a couple of opportunities toward something major that was going on in this city um, that was about to be legalized. And, uh, and, and my conviction was for me personally not to participate in it. I'm not stopping nobody else doing what they're going to do. And I don't hate nobody because they're doing what they're doing. God bless you. But as for me, now there's got to be an as for me position. There's got to be a, for, uh, Paul says, for me to live is Christ. At some point you arrive at a for me position. What the prophets say, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Now, we don't live in other people's houses. I, I don't matriculate at somebody else's address. But as for me and this house, we will serve the Lord. You see what I'm saying? 
So it's important for you to have convictions. That's what's important. And convictions, number one, bring you peace of mind. What it means is I don't live in a closet. I live out loud. I live my Christian life out loud. I don't live that in a closet. And yet, I don't wait of a flag either. I live it. It's in me. When you see me, you'll see it. I don't have to have a, a, a big pulpit Bible under my arm. I don't have to have a, some chain around my neck with my collar backwards for you to know it. When it's time for me to wear that, it's time for me to wear it for other reasons, but not for you. It's not time for you to recognize. No, you recognize me for what you see from here, what you see projected, who I am and what I'm all about. That's what's important. People with convictions have nothing to hide like that, right? Doesn't mean that, I don't say you don't have your own personal business. I'm saying that I don't, I don't live out my convictions in private. I live them out in public. Honestly. See, your faith is, it's personal, but it ain't private. Your, your relationship with God is personal, but it's not private. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It's not, well, that's between, uh, I don't I don't talk about God. I don't talk about, I don't talk about religion. I don't either. I don't talk about religion at all. I'm not talking about religion tonight. I don't teach religion. That's some professor in the seminary. I don't teach religion. I teach faith. I teach relationship with God. I don't teach religion. I, I teach relationship. <laughs> there is a great, great difference. Right? The next thing I think is important for us, as we live by example, as we um, seek to have peace of mind with ourselves and our convictions, is to have consistent integrity. You need some consistent integrity. Your behavior should not be erratic. There are certain people what comes up comes out, right? You know, certain people, uh, there's no telling what they might do. Certain people are so unpredictable. They might do so. No, 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 no. You don't need to be erratic when you're consistently integritous. When you have consistent integrity, you're a person that says what they mean and mean what they say. And I don't mean that in an arrogant way hand on your hip fashion. You, you are clear with your convictions. You, you, and, and you're not bragging. You're not boasting. That, 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 that wouldn't be Christian either. You're not bragging. You're not boasting. You're living this thing out. Here's what I really want you to see with this whole, whole entire series. It's about living it out. It's about standing on conviction. It's about standing firm. It's about letting nothing move you. It's about giving yourself fully to the Lord. It's about your labor not being in vain. It's about you living by what you believe. That's what this is about. Lord, give us the strength to live by what we believe. Give us the strength to live by our convictions. Give us the strength to live by what we say we are. Does that mean you're perfect? No. Does that mean that you'll never make a mistake? No. Does that mean you won't make a bad decision? No. Does that mean you won't make a bad choice? No. It does mean that you know where your North Star is. You know where your convictions are. Scripture says, and I am persuaded. I know who I am. And I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, nor any other creature shall be able 
separate me from the love of God. Why? I'm steadfast and consistent. Steadfast and consistent. I will not be shaken. Steadfast and consistent. And my integrity is consistent. What do integrity, people of integrity do? They do what they say they'll do. They show up. They stand up. They deliver. They're real. See, we got this unfortunate thing in, um, in our culture where being real is showing the worst of us. No, being real is showing the best of you and doing that consistently. Many of us want to say, I'm, I was just being real. And you just, you know, disrespected someone, cussed someone out, did this, did that, did the other, disrespected yourself. I guess we don't feel we can do that anymore. You know, nobody has any shame anymore about anything. So we don't feel we can disrespect ourselves. There's no such thing as embarrassment, I suppose. Right? We don't believe in that. It is what it is. That's what I did. Yeah, I said what I said. You know, I mean, we have that attitude now. That we can never be wrong. We never have to apologize. Do you know some people? I know some people that I don't care they can be wrong as two left shoes and will never apologize, never say I'm sorry, never. You know what? That's why you cannot live your life waiting for people to apologize to you. You can't live your life waiting to do the right thing because someone has not said I'm sorry. You cannot waste the rest of your life waiting for someone else's permission for you to be all right to be made whole and to move forward. I just said something right there. You don't have the luxury of waiting for others to give you a green light so that you can be settled in your convictions and settled in your soul. Be a person of integrity. Live it just like that. Where your yea is your yea and your nay is your nay. And where people understand that you can be depended upon. That your word, we used to say this. My daddy taught me this many, many years ago. Son, let your word be your bond. Now, I didn't know what that meant. I said, what's a bond? I thought that was something that people you know, get out of jail on bond or so, you know, I, I had it all mixed up. Let your word be a bond in that situation is what is known as a surety. Surety. It is good faith surety against the fact that you ain't going to run away from what you need to be accountable for. That's what a bond is. So my word is my surety that I will not run away from what I've committed myself to. Because see, commitment, y'all, is, is me accomplishing, executing on my convictions long after the emotion that I had with it has left me. Let me say that again. Commitment is me being able to stick to my convictions, to stand firm in my convictions long after the emotion that I may have had when I made that commitment was made. It's me keeping my word. And God wants people who keep their word. Let me get through this very quickly. Peace of mind is the first one. Consistent integrity is the second one. Here's the third one, confidence, confident people who are steadfast in God are confident people. They have an internal self-assurance because they know that they were created for a purpose. See, I know I was created for a purpose in this world. I don't walk through the earth aimlessly. I don't, regardless of what other people may think, about what I'm worth. 
I've discovered what I've worked, what I'm worth out of my relationship with God. God's revealed to me my value and my worth and my purpose. Two things you find out in life. One is the day you were born. The second is the day you find out why. One day I found out why. I found my purpose. I found my relationship in God, with God. I, I, I found out who I really was in him. I, I found out that, that, that God had plans for my life. I found out that God had purpose for my life. And once you make that discovery, once you're sure about it, there will be contrary winds that blow in different directions that, that want to take you away from your spiritual equilibrium. But I need somebody here to know and, and to understand that once you discover who you truly are, I'm talking about in God. I'm not talking about in the eyes of others. I'm not talking about what other people think. I'm talking about what God says about you and your life and his plan, and his purpose for your life. Then you have a confidence that cannot be shaken. You have a confidence that is of God that cannot be shaken. I'm not talking about arrogance. I'm not talking about self-righteousness. Okay? I'm talking about a confidence that only God can give to you. A confidence that helps you to understand that, that, that God is the joy and the strength of your life. God is the author and the finisher of your faith. God is the beginning and the end, the alpha and the omega of your life. That God is the one that empowers you and keeps you strong. Wow. Wow. You need to know that you need forward thinking and a servant's heart. That's why when you look at what God has done, I know in whom I have believed and I'm persuaded that he is able to keep me. There will be others who decide to do other things. There'll be others who go in different ways. There will be others who have different points of view. There'll be others who want to do things differently. But as for me, for me to live is Christ. For me to live. I've got to understand what are my for me convictions, for me positions, for me postures. For me, outlooks and points of view. What is that for me? Because here's what I'm, here's what I need to tell somebody. If all you have are the ideas and the ideals and the convictions of someone else, you'll always be manipulated by the whims of others. You need to stand by this word. Thy word has he hid in my heart that I may not sin against you. I walk by the word of God. My goodness. Here's the next one. Number one, with peace of mind. Number two, consistent integrity. Number three, Confident. You know what Philippians 1 and 6 says? Being confident of this very thing. He that hath begun a good work in you will perform it till the day of Jesus Christ. Can I just speak that over your life? I'm confident and I want you to be confident that God who has purposes in your life, who has plans in your life, who has provisions for your life, who has prosperity for your life, that same God is going to make it happen. He will perform. 
It's going to happen. You will live to see it happen. Are y'all hearing me out there? Let me say this again and declare it over your life. I'm confident that God, what God has promised, what God has shown you that is yours, not anyone else's, but God has revealed to you that is yet to be manifested in your life, what God has ordained for your life to be, for you to have, for you to experience, for you to know, for you to have those things. And listen, he wants you to have things. Matthew 6 and 33, seek ye first the, thing, the kingdom of God and its righteousness. And all these things will be added unto you. Wow, God's got things in store for you. I declare to you, if you stay firm, if you refuse to back down, if you live by your convictions, not trying to destroy anyone else, not trying to outdo anybody else, if you stay in your own spiritual lane, God has an ultimate goal in that lane. There's an ultimate place that he's trying to get to you to in that lane. I need you to understand that. I got one more here, I think. Wow. You got to be willing to speak up. I want to know why good people don't, don't speak up. I, I, I'm just about out of time. Why, why is it that good people don't speak up? Why is it? You can go to meetings and you already know who's going to ask a question. <laughs> Because they ask questions every meeting. They feel that they, they're not supposed to come to a meeting without asking questions. They can't look at material. and They, they can't hear dialogue uh, uh, unless they're, you know, they got to be negative about something. They got to uh, question something. They got to. You can be at work. And you, you, you in the team huddle, right? Somebody got something to say. Why is there so much? Why is it that good people don't speak up for what is right and what is good. And, I, and again, not in arrogance, not in anger, not in contention, but in love. Why can't we be the kind of people? Consistent, steadfast people are people who speak truth in love, who, who seek to, to communicate with others in love. Some people just want to show you how smart they think they are or that they caught something that you didn't catch or try to, you know, I'm in a meeting, I'm going to give you a gotcha real quick. Keep you on your toes, all that kind of stuff. <laughs> Confidence, steadfastness in your convictions and beliefs and you're not ashamed to share it. I'm not ashamed to testify about what God has done for me. As a matter of fact, Romans chapter 1, verse 16, gives it to us as I close out today. For I am not ashamed. The gospel of Jesus Christ, it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes. Come to the conclusion in your life that therefore I will not be shaken. Come to that conclusion, my brother, my dear brother, my dear sister. Come to that conclusion that's right here in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58, New International Version. My dear brothers and sisters, stand firm and refuse to allow yourself to let anything move you. Always give yourself fully to the work of the Lord. And here's why. Because your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Be blessed and live unshaken. Father God, we thank you for this time tonight to share your word with your people. I pray that you would bless and Keep us, 
as we go deeper and deeper into your unsearchable riches and word. But give us that resoluteness in us. We will not be shaken. We receive it tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, listen, if you believe that tonight, and if you know that that power is available to you tonight to not be shaken, let me just say to you, my brother, my sister, God has a much higher purpose for your life, a much higher plan for your life, and it can begin today. It can begin today. All you have to do is say yes. Yes to his will, yes to his way, and yes to his word. And yes to the conviction that he will give you to walk by faith and not by sight. If that's you, come on, text me right now. Join SEC 94000. You do that and we will connect. Listen, everybody. I need you right now to give as God has blessed you toward the support of this ministry. I want you to be a consistent and steadfast partner of this ministry as we continue to take it to the world. I need you and you need this word. And so we need each other. And God's caused us to be a repository, a place of good ground. And so the seeds that are sown into good ground have a great opportunity for fruition. You got to have both. You got to have a good seed, a willing heart, a spirit of generosity. And you've got to have a good place to put it. Good ground that is fertile with faith. That's Second Ebenezer Church. And I encourage you right now to share with us. Cash App, PayPal, Givelify. Let me pray quickly. Father, I thank you for every person out there who has been blessed by tonight's teaching. I pray now as we give of our resources, that which you've blessed us with, that you would keep us in perfect peace, keep our minds stayed on thee and prosper us accordingly. According to our faith be it unto us, according to your riches in glory, we receive it. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, I've had a ball. I've had a wonderful time sharing with you tonight in our wonderful Wednesday in the Word, right here from the Second Ebenezer Church, Detroit. Uh, Ebenezer everywhere. And we're delighted to have you on board and want you to come back on next Wednesday night and be right here on this platform, sharing with us the Word of the Lord. I love you. I've been praying for you. And we're praying for each other during this critical time. God's gonna do uh, exceeding abundantly above all we could ever ask or think. You keep on looking up. This is Bishop Edgar Van, and this is Ebenezer Everywhere. Mm -hmm.